One Swapa elders caught partying during lockdown. Finance Ministry will give rejected non-taxpayers a second chance at EIG. Government is working hard to help the needy, says McLeod Kashirua. And Valves Bay Municipality assesses living conditions of the vulnerable in the town. The Swapo Party celebrated its 60th anniversary at Parliament on the 19th of April 2020 while the rest of the country was in its second phase of lockdown. The AR movement has criticized the party while opposition parties have opened cases against the ruling party. <laughs> this is not the first time President Haki Kenkop attended an event since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus, as he also hosted over 400 guests at his inauguration in March 2020. The affirmative repositioning movement AR Job Amupanda said that the government is not taking their own law seriously. Yesterday, uh, Swapo had uh, their birthday and they, they were definitely, uh, they, they clearly violated the lockdown um, regulation. Uh, disturbingly, there was an announcement that uh, veteran Ben Amadila traveled from his farm. So we don't know what permission that he got to, to, to travel in order to come and cut the cake. Young people are being arrested when they are having parties in their homes. So these guys are not taking us seriously. So this, it's, 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 it, it, it it shows that they just want everybody else to be at home while they can do whatever they want to do. They're, they're not taking this pandemic seriously. So we want to send a serious message, a serious warning to the politician that don't take us for, for a ride. We're not idiots. We're not complying because we're afraid of any of you. So if you want chaos, you are going to get chaos. Let's all abide by lockdown regulation. Any further violation of, regu of lockdown regulation will be violated by everybody else. So you can arrest and do whatever you want to do, but you must take us seriously. Dilimani cultural troop alone is more than 10 people. How do you hold a meeting, a private, if it's a government event can be understood, a political party, a private event, yeah, placing the risk of the, the lives of everyone at risk. So who do you think you are? So this is a, a warning to all those politicians to take us seriously. AR activist Demilokeni Nyoma said the Swapo's actions were in direct contradiction to the rules and regulations set out in the state of emergency. What we have witnessed yesterday has nothing to deal with how best we are going to curb or flatten the curve of the uh, COVID-19. But regulation... Uh, Five amended section six of the regu regulation five, which is amended now, speaks about the amount of people that ought to be at the particular gathering. Now, particularly, we are looking at funerals, but they also mention that you may be in a particular area uh, if you are more than 10, but not you, are, you haven't come from the same housing, then you don't have the same purpose intended. For example, like the ATMs, it's allowed that for that to happen. We don't know if there's an ATM in, uh, in Parliament where the swap of politicians went to, to withdraw. Now, there are 750. So, and then again, you, you find that when you go to the restrictions, 9.1, it clearly says nobody must leave their houses. Section, the, the one that deals with, with travelling, we are told the, the veteran Ben Amadila drove from his farm. So we don't know what special permission he got to travel out. The rest of us must go queue when our families die in the north. We queue at the police station, we get that. And, and in fact, there's a part where you fill in the reason as to your traveling. Meanwhile, the Popular Democratic Movement PDM presidential spokesperson and the PDM Secretary General lay charges against the ruling party. The Landless People's Movement LPM have also opened a case with the Namibian police force. We, the Landless People's Movement, strongly con condemn the actions that were taken by the Swapo ruling party and we are here today to lay charges against the Swapo ruling party for breaking the laws in terms of the shutdown, the lockdown. There's a global pandemic and this requires us to stay in the house, but our leaders don't seem to get that. Therefore, we require that they must be laid charges to pay $2,000 each and every one who was at that party. I'm Namibia. I'm Sister Hulda Navasis, registered nurse currently working at Namibian Oncology Center, Vantuk. 
I'm here to encourage each and every Namibian to stay home in order to slow the spread of the 2019 novel coronavirus. Physical distancing is very important. We will still be socially connected. Therefore, my people, be part of the solution. Stay home. The Ministry of Finance has announced that it has received over 570,000 applications for the Emergency Income Grant, with 234,000 approved since the process commenced a week ago. It also said that it is aware of concerns by those rejected, stating that it is working on mortalities to ensure that no qualifying person is left out. The Ministry of Finance says the payment process for the EIG grant is going according to plan with $175 million disbursed to recipients. Many, however, were rejected due to the fact that their names appear on the tax register. Some turned up at the Finance Ministry head office to get answers. The reason why I'm here today is that my company is already registered in 2014. Uh -huh. I operated until 2017. And that company was breaking, some thieves, so they stole everything of mine, then I have to close the company. But today, because of that 750, they said my name is on a taxpayer. The reason I'm asking why, because I don't pay anything of a tax. Now, they are saying our name is registered on a, we are, our ID is registered as a taxpayer, but we lose jobs because of coronavirus. So we didn't know that we have to run quickly and cancel our tax, whatever is there. So they're supposed to tell us every people have to come to the office and, and cancel their, their taxpayer. But now we won't get the money. And then as the president has said that we must receive the money, now I'm rejected. I'm also, I'm also unemployed and I registered for this taxpayer. And that time when I registered, I registered so that I can go and give it when I'm like applying for jobs. And then from that time, they are still saying I'm a taxpayer. No, they, I don't understand. And, and at this moment, we did even not receive the food and we did not receive this money because of that story. And now I don't know how will I be helped. And I'm having two kids at this moment and unemployed. I applied at um, MMI Holdings at Metropolitan. And I have to, when I'm applying for the job, I have to attach that certificate, uh, taxi certificate. It was even maybe three years back right now. So. For now, I don't know about this money. We we applied for the 750 just recently. Come out, this money is for for the lockdown, but I don't understand about this now. Because some of us we are just receiving the SMS like your your your, your application your application is rejected. But seriously, honestly, I never been deducted like taxi pay or something like that. The Chief Public Relations Officer at the Finance Ministry, Tonateni Shududu, said his ministry is aware of this challenge. The ministry is not ignoring that point. So what we are doing is we are appealing to people under that category to, to, be, just, be, to, to be just patient. We are working out modalities on how we could rectify that problem. In fact, uh, we are currently uh, talking with a receiver of revenue to put mechanisms in place uh, to receive these people so that uh, their details are updated. Because what happened is that some people were working and, and when they stopped working, they never informed the receiver of revenue uh, that they are no longer receiving a taxable uh, income. And their tax number uh, uh, is still showing as active, so it needs to be deactivated. So we will provide them with an opportunity in few days to come to come to the receiver of revenue and rectify that. And once that is rectified, and they need to declare that they are no longer receiving a taxable income, and they need also to prove that they are unemployed. Uh, they are unemployed, and so they they will again be given another opportunity to reapply. For now. We are only requesting them to be patient while we are putting all the modalities in place. Shidudu said the ministry will introduce an appeal process by the end of this week for members of the public that feel that they truly deserve to get the once off $750 but were rejected. If there are people that think 
uh, they were supposed to benefit from this process, but uh, they were not given an opportunity or they were rejected uh, for any sort of reasons. The ministry will provide an appeal process uh, for them to come and present their stories. And once uh, the ministry is satisfied uh, with what has been presented to them, uh, they can relook into the matter and perhaps uh, uh, people can again be, be given their grants. So many people with the, that have applied from one cell phone number. So we need to identify, to, we need a proper identification mechanism from regional councils to at least establish that these people exist and they have given consent to the applicant to apply on their behalf. So we are currently in discussion with the regional governors and hopefully by the, by, by the end of this week, we will start with that process at regional councils to identify those people and then the councillors will now send us the list that indeed these people exist and they will um, and they will uh, they, they, they have given consent uh, to a particular person to to to, to apply on their behalf um, the purpose of this validation and identification is to curb uh, fraudulent applications and to ensure that no qualifying uh, beneficiary is left out. The application process is open until the end of April. The social grant is for those who lost their livelihoods in the informal settlement sector as well as the unemployed. Companies in the public and private sectors have set out ways in assisting the government during this pandemic by donating food parcels and providing financial assistance. Receiving the donation from Jem Diamond was governor of the Comas region, Laura McLeod Kachirwa, as she assured the public that the government is working hard to help the highly affected during this pandemic. At the donation handover, Comas Regional Governor Laura McLeod Kachira requested community leaders to lead their communities to refrain from favoritism when identifying beneficiaries of the COVID-19 grant. She is also strongly encouraging door-to-door -door identification as it practices regulations set aside by the government to avoid social gatherings. When we are selecting the beneficiaries of this food, let's honestly go out a mile and select the right beneficiaries. Let's have no favor for anybody. The fact that we do not have enough, the moment we'll have a favor, we are not going to have enough. Sometimes we must also know those people that we are registering as politicians. Who are they? Can we go out and give food door to door so that we get, we get to know their environment? We acquaint ourselves with who they are. You cannot just stay at office and distribute food left and right to everybody, at the end of the day, you may have wrong beneficiaries. But if you go door to door, you will be able to identify and say, but this house deserves to receive this food. For the past three days, this house, there has not even been fire made because there is nothing to cook. And those are the type of people that we think actually should get this food. Yeah, now, uh, we, you, when you are at the office, somebody will come here and register, and when you get to the house, you will find the fridge is full. Does that person really need that food parcel? No, I don't think so. But then as long as we are sitting at office and everybody is coming here, we are going to give this food to wrong beneficiaries. 
Another issue why we are also suggesting door to door is also to practice the regulations in place. The regulations in place are speaking about social distances. Now, when you bring everybody here, there will be a crowd and gatherings. Also, within the regulations, we are saying avoid gatherings. Now, if people come here and you find 700 people at the office, how do you maintain that social distances? McLeod Kachirwa also stated that the government is trying to avoid duplicating current schemes that are already in place, such as food bank, and that the rightful beneficiaries that are affected during this pandemic are assisted. We are also trying to make sure that we do not duplicate the current government schemes that are in place. That is the food bank that we, are, we have been having, that is the government grants, and that is the LTH pension funds. We really wouldn't want to give a person who receives those, those, those schemes. And it's not because we are not saying they do not face problems, but we are saying what we have is not enough for everybody. Hence, we are trying to be a bit stingy and give to those that will be mostly affected, mainly those that we regard as affected during this time of COVID-19. We are saying probably it could be those that are unemployed and it could be those that lost income. Because before COVID-19, they were doing some informal uh, businesses, and those informal businesses now has been closed down. Obviously, they have lost an income. People are saying, we want food, we want food. But sometimes we'll discover that, that those that are saying we want food, somewhere or somehow, they are on a different other scheme. Whether you are getting food bank, but now people are trying to translate the COVID donation, as if COVID donations, then it should be given to everybody. But we are saying, if we give COVID donation to everybody, then we are duplicating. Currently, as it is now, we are giving out food bank parcels. Now, if you say we give COVID donations to everybody, are we saying the COVID recipient must go home with two packets, two food parcels? This one is COVID and the other one is food bank then I think we are not doing the right thing. And I must also confess here that government is aware of the situation. Government is aware that our people are hungry. We are not really joking with these things. So we do not want to see people that are taking this for granted and you know, doing other things that are really not solving the problem. Jem Diamond donated 200 food parcels which was shared between Samora Marshall and Komasdal constituencies. I'm Kirsty Fanamara, currently an intern in Cathedral Hospital Surgery Department. Two days ago I was on coronavirus call. I had to test patients and it was quite nerve-wracking for me. Please stay at home so I don't have to test you. The mayor of Wellfish Bay recently paid a visit to homeless people that have taken refuge in deserted houses at the coastal town. The group of over 60 people were given food to help sustain them during the COVID-19 lockdown period. The mayor of Wolfish Bay together with his councillors have come to the aid of the homeless people at the town. The vulnerable group has over time become like a family and have seek shelter at the deserted houses of the town. Some members of the group make a living doing occasional small jobs but can no longer earn money due to the lockdown. Our homeless people in Wolfish Bay, most of them, there's no demarcated area where they are living. They are living in houses. Although the house of Patton belongs to them, but at least they have shelter for themselves. Uh, during this, uh, uh, the first week when we received the instruction, that is, let me call it an instruction from the head of state that all the waters must be open. We open up their waters, the ones that are living in these houses, and we even assist with them with food. Even now, I'm going to give on the other side also some parcels of food. A representative of the group, Regina Johnson, expressed her gratitude for the contributions by the mayor, saying that they are mostly concerned with good sanitation and blankets. Toilet uh, facilities, 
water we already got thanks to the mayor and just for cleaning and we need uh, yeah, yeah. If, if there's people out there in the community, yeah, you blankets. can help us. There's some people, guys, here needs blankets and yeah, blessings, yeah. yeah. Any jobs out there, we are always here. Now that Corona is there, we are all just all broken down and on the background. We are on pause, on hold. House cleaning, cooking, needlework. My friend, she does hair and yeah, I can bake, cook, yeah. The Wolfish Bay Mayor noted that plans are underway to see if the vulnerable group can be afforded a living space at Farm 37, a township soon to be established a few kilometers outside Wolfish Bay. What happened is that even we have the regulations, we cannot allow people to make fire on their open space. That's why I've been accompanied by my chief executive, because after this visit we are going to sit and see to it. First, the hygiene, yes, we have seen what uh, the, the background looks like. And uh, the fire also, I also observe on that one. So after this visit, we are going to sit and see what, uh, who are we going to assist them. The Wolfish Bay Municipality has been hard at work during the lockdown, connecting water supply to all the houses, cleaning the town and providing sanitizers to residents. Akili, Akili. This is Akili, she has a secret Tell us, tell us When the sun goes down, Akili goes to sleep And she enters a world where all the animals speak Akili, 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 Akili Akili, 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 Akili But there is something strange about this magic land The animals speak English which she doesn't understand But if you help her out, we know it can be done Akili can learn English and it will be fun In other leading stories, thieves recently broke into the Okahanja Central Agricultural Stores and stole 120 canisters of pesticides belonging to the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform. Each canister contained 20 litres of chemicals to fight the African migratory locusts that are currently invading crops and grazing areas in the region. It is suspected that the criminals poured the pesticides into the drainage system at the surroundings of the storage facility at Okahanja town, which could result in severe water contamination and affect the health of residents. The Okahanja municipality was informed of the incident and advised to assess the situation for further actions to be taken. It is assumed that the thieves are trying to sell the containers around town. The Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform would like to warn the public not to buy or use these containers as they still contain residues of highly hazardous chemicals. The chemicals cannot be cleaned out with any normal home detergent. The Ministry is hereby requesting members of the public to report any suspected sale of empty 20 litres plastic containers to the nearest police station. Welcome to Comments Corner, your daily dose of comments from the hottest social media pages. The Comas Regional Police Force visited several informal settlements of Katutura this week to educate and respond to queries by the public on the COVID-19 pandemic. Jesaya said that is how people should be engaged. France agreed with Josiah and said the leaders should familiarize themselves with the situation on the ground. Simon said that the general public must be informed in a way that they can understand. Marie said not all officers are respectful and well-mannered as they are disrespecting those that need to go to hospitals.
France said Chikongo knows the pain of humans because he treats the poor and the rich the same. The Landless People's Movement at a press conference on the Beyond COVID-19 draft announcement questioned why Dr. Bernard Haufiku has been sidelined by President Hage Genkop and Health Minister Kalumbi Shangula. Joshua said this is the type of leader they need in the country. Damona said as long as there is no mass testing for COVID-19, they would not know the exact numbers of cases. Alfred questioned whether the statistics are true. Skoro said where there is smoke, there is always fire. Martin said sometimes people need to put their political difference aside as they can be truth in Swartzboy's statement. And that is all from Comments Corner. Be sure to post your comments on our social media pages for broadcast every day only on Today on One. Today with Joseph Prince. Even though the law sounds tempting, you can produce instant results. Amen. It's a cover-up. It's all a veneer. It's all outward. It's all behavior modification. But grace, when it transforms you, be patient when you put people under grace. Sometimes there's no immediate result. But when the results come, it's permanent. It's solid. It's real. It's abundant, both in quality and quantity. Amen. Accommodation is the ability of the eye to focus on distant and near objects. And I bring it in contact with the electroscope. What you must keep in mind is positive charge can't move. It is the negative charge that moves. So the first one, EF, is then going to be 0 minus negative 2 over 4 minus negative 4. Look at my signs. If you go wrong there, if you don't substitute in brackets, you're definitely going to get wrong answers.